can I just take this opportunity to say that it was just one message that she acknowledged and she decided to come. And I'm so happy that oh, you made it here. Yeah, that's true. But thank you guys. Before coming, we asked a lot of questions about which your favorite Charisma Kapoor movie is. Oh my God. But they have given their answers. I'm going to tell you which ones. Okay. If you had to look back at your filmography, which has been your most difficult part and why? Firstly, it's a pleasure to be here today. I really don't know what to say because I think it's been a gradual journey for me. I was so young, I was like 16, 17 years old. Straight from school, I went to college for two months and then straight on a film set. So yes, very protected background, just right there in front of the camera. So I think in those days especially, we didn't have Instagram and we didn't have Facebook Absolutely. and we didn't have YouTube. So we had to really, you know, work hard to reach the masses, you know, to reach the interiors of India apart from the cities. So instead of it being, uh, which was my most difficult role, I think it was a gradual journey of learning. So from being, you know, doing commercial movies to then a little more uh, in-depth films, then a bit of serious cinema. It was a gradual growth. So I'd say every movie, because that's the truth. And I genuinely feel like that, you know, good, bad, ugly, blockbuster or disaster. <laughs> I love all of them. I think it was, you know, a grow growing process. But yes, I think um, Zubeda, I'd say, was very different for me. <laughs> You know, because, you know, working with uh, Shamji, I got the great opportunity to work with the Sham Benegal. And uh, he was like a teacher. I would sit with him and he was like, Sab bhul jao. All your awards, all your movies, whatever you've, whatever you've done, I appreciate it and I respect it, but can I just strip all that off? I was like, yes, I was like this student learning and wanting to learn and I think that's the biggest thing for an actor is when you don't take yourself seriously and think you are a student always like even today like you know when I I've done an OTT show I was like you know I will dive into this character I am not Charisma Kapoor I am this character so I genuinely like really learned that through Zubeda and you know playing a real life uh, a uh, person like today it's very cool to be like I'm in a biopic but I if I may say so I did it 20 years ago <laughs> 20, a long time ago where it was considered you know art house cinema which was parallel cinema these were the words that were used so I think I was very lucky and fortunate to have done a movie like that you have done many things many many years <laughs> ahead of time can we just give a round of applause for that I love you! <laughs> um, you know, for me, growing up, there was a part of me in every role that you played. Uh, how many people actually, men or women, if you look at the characteristics, the things, the emotions that she went through in her movies, and the silences and the pauses, I think, defined Charisma Kapoor. How many of you actually agree? <laughs> okay. And I, I just feel that you had an interesting mix of commerce and content, like you said. You came from a heavyweight legion. You had to live up to it. But you made a legacy of your own. And it's very difficult. Today, when we look back, you know, and people say that you inspired me, and we'll come to that, a lot of surprises. Um, but how does it make you feel? Like today, it's not just us, you know. Even the 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, they rec recognize you, and you have, you've stayed <laughs> relevant all over. Yes, thank, you. thank you so much for saying that, Nayan. You know, as a young girl, yes, belonging to the family that I came from, which I consider, you know, very fortunate and grateful that I was part of the, this immense talent, I would say, you know, of uh, my grandparents or my uncles and aunts and my parents and cousins and everyone. But I remember going on the sets, like on a Sunday, on the weekends to RK Studio, and I would watch my grandfather's work. And I remember distinctly on the set of Ram Teri Ganga Meli, and there was a trolley shot being put. And I was like, wow, this world is like so amazing. And if I could, when I grow up, 
contribute even this much to this great legacy, I would be grateful and thankful. And I want to thank all you guys out here and my audience for giving me that chance and opportunity, you know, to display whatever little talent I had and giving me that chance. Because yes, it was a great leg legacy to live up to. And I think one thing was, I was very clear that I'm not just doing it because I want to be a star or a known person or I want to be famous. I genuinely wanted to act like I loved the craft. Even like growing up when I was in school, I would be the first one in every school play, in every elocution contest, even though I was pretty shy. But this was a passion, so I would always be dancing. So these were things I loved. And I'm glad I could, you know, put it into my career as well. So yeah, I think uh, it was important for me to choose different cinema. It was a struggle. When I came, if I may say so, people were like, oh, she looks like Randeer Kapoor without a mustache. She's too fair, she's pale, she has light eyes. Will she be able to emote? So as a young girl of 16, 17, to hear these comments, it was tough. It was very difficult. But I was like, no, I have to have that focus. And my parents and my grandfather always told, told me, it's not going to be a bed of roses. You will have to work very hard. Because the day your movie reaches that parda, you're nobody's daughter, granddaughter, anything. The audience will decide. So I had that determination and I was like, I, I have to do it. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, of course, I have watched you, I've been inspired by you. And I might come from a um, place where I've really, really idolized and admired you. And many people sitting out in the audience would say the same because hey, we all felt represented in minute ways, which people might not understand, but we did. We, it related to us. I don't know if you, um, I can just tell you that even if you were not from this family, people would have still loved Karisma Kapoor for who she is. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, when you started off, the times were also very different. Um, I remember doing this interview with Karina, and Ka I asked Karina the same question. And said, she said that it was not so difficult for me. It was more difficult for Karisma because she was the first woman in the family who decided to make that plunge and stuck to it and proved every detractor wrong. Was it difficult in the beginning for you to make that plunge? So firstly, I want to clear up this big myth and this big story for so many years and generations and decades that my family, it was never that, oh, the women in our family cannot work. Because I just would like to point out that uh, Shami uncle's wife, Geeta Baliji, or Jennifer Auntie, Shashi Kapoorji's wife, they worked out of choice. They did choice. these movies after having babies and they, they wanted to work. The other women in the family chose not to. Like even my mom and I think Neetu Auntie, they were like, Abhi bahut ho gaya. we are in love and we want to sit at home and now be homemakers. So it was their choice. It was never that, oh, you know, the girls can't work. And even my buas, I'd like to go and clarify, they, they were not inclined towards acting or movie making. So it was not that the women were not allowed. Like I told you, my grandfather, in fact, used to advise me and, you know, tell me ki it's not going to be easy. Bahut lamba safar hai, and you have to be ready for all the thorns. And actually, you know, his little, little advice, I used to keep it in mind. And the focus, ki hard, there is no replacement for hard work and focus which I am a prime example. Like, you know, whatever roles I did or whatever, yes, I put in a lot of effort. And I think that genuineness or effort, the audience kind of related to, like you say, I think it's, it's that. So there's no replacement for that. There's no replacement for love also, and we all really <laughs> love you. So we have a really sweet surprise. Oh. Uh, if I may ask the team to play the first surprise oh for you. <laughs> I think Karishma ke baare mein jitna bolo utna kam hai. It's a common thing to say, but for me uh, to say something about Lolo is actually very difficult because she's someone who is not only a fabulous human being, but she's a dedicated mother, such a hardworking actor. Till today, I think every actress 
in our country looks up to Lolo because they want to be like her. They want to dress like her. They want to look like her. They want to dance like her. I think every actress um, wants that adulation that Lolo had in the 90s, that quintessential mass superstar heroine. I think that is what Lolo stood for. And she till today, I think, stands and represents that entire generation of the 90s. All the girls, all the women, um, you know, they just look at Lolo and they feel that instant connect. She truly was, is and always will be um, the darling of, I think, the nation, the darling of our hearts. And above all, I think, somebody who looks after our family like a queen. And I don't think this family, or at least me, um, my parents, my, my children, I think all of us would, you know, we would be lost without Lolo. And she knows that. I'm so happy that she's sharing her views, her thoughts um, at the Jagran Film Festival. And um, I think it's just, it's just absolutely amazing to have her as a sister and actually more like, I think I'm more like her, uh, her first daughter before Samira, like she says. So um, thank you for having her and um, thank you for everything, Lolo. I think I'm going to cry. Jagran Film Festival. <laughs> That's so sweet. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you, Bebo. We're missing you here. <laughs> so, so I'm the, coming for lunch soon. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea was to get both of you together, actually three of you. And I'm going to play another audio because oh. we are celebrating Shakti of Indian cinema with Charisma Kapoor. And then there are two other people who have been Shakti in their generations as well. And they continue to be the terrific trio. Uh, can we play the other audio as well? Lolo, Ahlia. you are such an inspiration to all of us, to the whole family, to young girls, to mums, to actors, to dancers. The hard work and dedication that you have towards everything in your life since the beginning of your career and even now, the way you handle your work life, your friends' life, your family life, you life, we love you and are so, so, so proud of you. And I can't wait for the world to see the magic that you have created in your show. Because I've had a sneak peek and I am very confidently going to say that everyone is going to be in for a very, very, very exciting slash surprising slash fantastic ride. Love you, Lolo. Mwah. Thank you. Oh. Can I'm getting very emotional, guys. <laughs> that was Thank the you. plan. But the point is that, you know, genuinely across generations, you have stayed relevant uh, to your sister, to Alia. And I think even the ones who are going to come 10 years later, they're going to look up to you and your career graph and feel like, God, maybe we should also get a Zubeda someday. <laughs> and that's the beauty of being Charisma Kapoor. How do you take this love, the adulation that you don't just have from your family members, but from everybody around? It's a universal emotion. Well, honestly, I'm very thankful and grateful. And I think that's the most important emotion that I feel. At the same time, guys, I love you all, but I don't take it too seriously because I'm human too and I have a very normal life. I've chosen from choice when I had children to stay out of the spotlight. And a lot of people used to ask me, you know, how does it feel? I'm like, I love it. So I love my audience and I think maybe you guys respect me for that also, that I chose kind of to also take, take a, a different path because I felt that was important. So I think for me, prioritizing things in life is something that's very important to me. So yes, thank you so much. I'm ever grateful and thankful to all of you, including this generation, <laughs> um, for, for all the love and for maybe, you know, acknowledging maybe the hard work because we used to really work like crazy. There was a time in the 90s where I would do four or five shifts a day 
it was a very, very different era, a very different time. There were times where I was speaking dialogues from other movies on another set <laughs> because I was like, like a zombie. But, but it was a time of love and passion and movies were made on that passionate determination and instinct. So I kind of miss that also sometimes because of course everything's become so streamlined today and so professional, but that also had a different kind of magic to it, yeah. But when you did it, I, 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 I remember doing this interview with you when you said that today's zamana badal gaya guys. Um, ek time pe jab aapne, um, sexy, sexy, sexy mujhe log bole. Everybody had raised uh, eyebrows and they had said like, no, ye kaisa hai, ye sab. How did you deal with that time? And actually the song had to be changed, right? The song was changed to Baby Baby. And uh, I, I remember I was 19 at that time and I was like, what wrong am I doing? I mean, I'm just trying to prove that I'm a good dancer and that I have the energy and I can make a mark. Like what they told me to do, I did. And I remember I used to cry myself to sleep. And my mom and my sister would be like, don't worry, you were good in the song and people will notice you. Yeah, there were, those were the days. And I was like, oh my God, should I not do this anymore? Should I just turn back and go to studying and go back to college? Or am I doing something wrong here? But then honestly, with my family support and, and their guidance, they were like, listen, you are in this business. Some people will love it, some people will hate it. And you have to take it, you know, uh, uh, on, on the chin. You need to accept it. And these were things like how I grew and I learned. And I was like, no, if I am passionate, if I'm doing something truthfully, the audience will understand that. And I think, I think that's what happened, even though the wordings were changed and a lot of <laughs> more, sorry if I may, so, may say so, Worst things came out, but really? people still, as in like worst things, as in like more khulle kapde, a wording, songs were then later on accepted. But yeah. this song, which <laughs> I had to the wordings had to get changed. But but that's fine. And, and the weird part is that my knees were bruised beyond for this song. Like there were a lot of, you know, uh, mm. knee movements and all on the ground. But Chalo, it all paid off later in a different kind of way. You know, you are the most successful heroine of the 90s. There was a string of 17 super hits that you've given back to back. And uh, it's, it's uh, no mean feat. A lot of people till date, you know why we are calling you Shakti is in, a, is in a lot of ways. Because a lot of people till date also believe that women cannot do comedies. And when I asked most of the people, of course there was a Zubeda, of course there was a Raja Hindustani named, but there were Fiza. But there were so many of them saying hero number one, BV number one, and what are the other things that you guys said? So many of them. No, because you have done Hasina Man Jaigi, ha Raja Babu. See, there will be, be names coming and floating. I think two heroines at that point who actually completely uh, threw the win uh, myth out of the window that women can't do comedy was you. Were you and Sri Devi, ma'am? Because I think you both excelled in comedies, guys. So give it up uh, for them. My favorite, Shriji. How did you manage to do that? Did you, did you also hear such noises around you? Kiare, larki, so, comedy nika honestly, as an artist, as an actor, I must tell you that it's more difficult to do comedy than do a serious role. Because you have to, you know, it's all about timing. You're not, you're not supposed to go over the top. And at the end of the day, the audience has to laugh in a good way. So yeah, it is very difficult. But for that, I really need to thank of course, Shriji, who's always been an inspiration, and uh, Chichi, mm -hmm. and David Ji. Uh, I think we had great writers like Romi Jafri at that time, and, and David Ji and Chichi, and it was just a combination and teamwork of, you know, everyone that kind of made that happen. And I think which, with each movie with them, I think the timing became better. And then uh, Salman came into the, into the yes. mix of, of the David movies. And he also has great timing. So I think it's all about the timing with the actors, you know. It, it, it is literally that, but definitely I feel comedy is much more tough. Tell me something that the world doesn't know about three people, okay? One is Govinda sir, one is Salman sir, and one is Shah Rukh sir. Because of course we all love Dil To Pagal Hai. And we all love oh. Nisha. Uh, 
So I think uh, Chichi is a very emotional person. He's very emotional. If you, if he's very sensitive. But even though he does so much comedy and makes everyone laugh, but deep down inside, yeah, he's very quiet and very sensitive, actually. SK, now what do I say? In every movie of ours, he's only pulled my leg in every shot. Like, what? Number one banna hai? What? Really? I said, please give me one retake. Why? You want to be number one? You want people to notice your dance? I'm like, yes, please, I beg you. Normally, I wouldn't give it, come, come, I'll give you. <laughs> so I would, he would always pull my leg. And I think you can see that chemistry in a different way. And uh, I think Shah Rukh is Shah Rukh. I mean, he's so involved and such a giving actor. I mean, all of them are. But Shah Rukh, like, honestly, really supported me a lot in Dil To Pagal Hai, especially, especially in my that very important scene. Oh, uh, you know, where I'm upset with God, which is a very unusual emotion for an actress to feel on in, in Indian cinema. And I had a huge monologue, like a three-page dialogue, and I have to tell you all a very interesting story. That we were shooting in, in Germany for this, and obviously it was my very important scene, and everybody was really like, you know, into it, and even, of course, Shah Rukh was there, everyone. And the scene started, and it was a one-take. This entire dialogue of three pages, I had to say in one shot, in one take. <laughs> Thank you. Now, in the middle of the shot, after I've spoken about one and a half pages, suddenly I feel tap, tap. It started to rain in the middle of the shot. I was like, I don't know whether I should continue or to cry or what, you know, like, and I just didn't stop. And, and, and I could see Yashjeev saying, continue, continue. And yeah, and I just broke down after I finished because in the middle of such an important scene of an artist, it started raining. So yeah, you know, things happen which people don't know behind the camera. But of course, you know, Shah Rukh and everyone was so supportive that they were like, don't worry, don't worry, they'll use the original take. Because in an emotional scene also, you know, your, your first emotion is always, uh, you know, your, your, the right emotion. So yeah, I've been through lots of situations like that, that people don't know what happens behind the camera. So, yeah. And actually a lot of people um, decided to not do the film before you, and you were the one who never cared because you were very secure about what the part that So was honestly, coming. I must tell you another truth to this, that I also was offered this movie, and I was like, um, no, no, it's a dance movie. I can't dance with Madhuri Dixit. <laughs> Let it be. And so why have so many people said no to this movie? And it was a very fleeting thing. And then life went on for a month or two. And then Adi called me. And he was like, I want you to hear this movie now. Because don't go by people's perceptions. I really want you. And you know, we've reworked the script. and. I was very like nervous. I was like, you know, I'm an MD fan. And here, how can I do a competition dance? And it's about two dancers. And I heard the script and I was like, wow, this is bold for that time. And I have to honestly admit to you that it was my mother, my mother who said, you have to do this movie. She was like, no, you have to. If you're good, you'll shine. What do you mean? Take it in, in, in a good way. So yes, she she was the force who actually pushed me towards doing Dil To Bagel. And a national award to that, guys. <laughs> yeah, and I have said this to you multiple number of times. Whenever I meet her, I say this, that there is a petition online, guys. Genuinely. You can go look for it. It's called hashtag justice for Nisha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which says that Rahul should have ended up with Nisha. Oh, no. Honestly, I... If I may say so, I don't think so, because I really think that was a true love. And I'm sure Nisha killed it and may have had lots of boyfriends and then found the love of her life. Who knows? Right? <laughs> yeah. But you taught us to sacrifice. So I want to tell the audience one last thing. As an inspirational story, because this is what's happened to me in my life. Okay, guys, which I don't think Nayan also knows. But so as a child, being a film buff also, you know, I used to you know, wait for every Sunday for Khalid Mohammed's review because those days there was no Instagram and no social media and whatever that we're watching. So every Sunday there would be a movie review by Khalid Mohammed. And you know, whether the movie is a hit or flop or you know, critique it, how is the performance? 
So for years, like this has gone over maybe two decades, like since I was seven, eight, five years old, I don't even remember since I could read. I remember reading the review of Mr. India being the biggest Shri Devi fan. So I'm reading, detailing, you know, this, this. And at the end of the review, it was, you know, this movie should have been called Miss India because Shri Ji was so fantastic in this movie, okay? I was like, wow, this is, this is life and this is, you know, the way it should be when you reach the top and pinnacle, right? What more than this? Then many years later, maybe eight to 10 years later, I was a Madhuri fan and I was like, oh, Raja had just released. And I'm reading the review, wow, you know, top of her game, Madhuri Dixit. Raja should have been called Rani. I was like, will this ever happen to me one day? And then one day happened that Raja Hindustani released and it was that Sunday and I opened the paper and it was like, this movie should have been called Rani Hindustani. <laughs> so, as a young girl, like that was the kind of passion or determination I had to making a mark with the audience. And working hard, ki, you know, I want to do it. If I, if I do it in my life, it has to be the best. So guys, always dream big, stick to your, your, your beliefs and it will come true and you will make it. It is very important that the youth is pushed. And through this, I just want to say, because you are all young people sitting here who has a passion and a drive. She started off young and she has not stopped at that. She has never ever differentiated between me and somebody who has possibly been senior to me. And she has always been there for me as a person, as an actress. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for being you because you represent all of us and you represent the Shakti of Indian cinema. Thank you so much.